In this video, we'll be going over the different stages in Xing Tian's mountain and how to beat them and which things to pay attention to. We go through all the stages and then I have some additional words at the end. The first stage in our case is Cold Hearted Huntress. In this stage, you will face three Ymirs with Magi's Blessing and a CC Immune Artemis. Generally, I prefer killing the Ymirs first, but I never really had too many problems with this sound. You can just try and force out all the CC immunity, the, all the Magi's Blessings from the Ymirs and CC them after, or you can just go for Artemis first. A monster and his friends is a little different. Here, I would recommend focusing down Artemis first, as she has crit and can deal pretty high amounts of damage if you're unlucky. Ra can be focused second and then the Bull Demon King. However, if you have a lot of Wrath on your team, you can also go for the Bull Demon King first and kill him before you kill the rest. Generally, he doesn't seem to be a big of a threat though. Our round number three is Tower of Power. Here, you want to focus the minions first because you can't attack the tower otherwise and take down the tower as soon as all the minions are killed. Use your AoE right away, you're not going to need it for anything else. What's important here is that stuff like Crusher or Titan's Bane can really help you take the tower down faster, as the tower will eventually kill the target. If you have Aegis, you can reset the aggro to the tower and that way survive longer and deal more damage to the structure. The next round for us is Bar Fight. Bar Fight is very simple. The ground is intoxicated, so you're drunk at all times, even if you use CC immune abilities, and you have the three Bakos you have to fight against. Not too much of a problem in my opinion, as long as you can aim your abilities halfway decently, you should be able to win this round without any problems most of the time. The drunkenness doesn't really affect you all too negatively. The round that comes up now is one of the most scary ones in my opinion. The Bashful Lion requires you to kill all of the pillars first, or destroy the pillars first, before you go for the Manticore. Otherwise, the damage will be reflected even multiple times. And if you use abilities like the Anubis did there, you are going to take a lot of damage. Ideally, just use basic attacks and try to kill the pillars before you use anything else. If you have someone like Ymir, Odin or Gabrakan, you can wall off the lion and keep him away that way. Otherwise, I would recommend using Sprint or, for example, uh, Weakening Curse in order to keep him away, just make sure that whatever movement or heal abilities you use don't deal damage to the lion because otherwise you're going to take a lot more damage than you are benefiting from. When the towers are down, you can just use Wrath if you have it to kill the lion even faster. I would recommend having at least percentage penetration if not Crusher for this round specifically. Round number 6 is Rewind, 3 Kronos that will all ult as soon as they get to low health. You should ideally focus them down one by one unless you have enough AoE burst to kill all three at once because if one of them manages to rewind, the next time he rewinds will be faster. So he will then rewind from half health and then from three fourths of his health and it's basically impossible to kill him. So burst them as soon as possible but have focus burst. The Furious Fire Giant is really just a fire giant that you can't de-aggro no matter how far you walk away and he has some amped up abilities, meaning for example his ground lava is in a lot more pools, so you will take more damage if you stand around there. Other than that, it plays out like a normal fire giant fight, and stuff like Wrath of Frenzy is very effective here. Behind you is another one of the nastier rounds. You're playing against an amped up Loki with maximum defenses, and what you really need to pay attention to here is the decoys. He will spawn a bunch of decoys at the same time, and what you want to do is group up as a team so the decoys land in one place and then spread out so you're able to avoid all the decoys if possible. You see us grouping up here, there's the shell as well and now we almost all get out of the decoy damage. Then Loki will always ult a target around the third decoy so pay attention to that as well and ideally try to avoid being hit like I try there, I just jump so if I was ulted I would have avoided the ult and that way you can usually survive the round. Rolling stones can be the easiest or the hardest roll depending on your team especially cripples or silences help here so if you have Nox or Poseidon you can stop the gap very very easily as he will then stop his rollout and just stand there in place until the CC is over otherwise you have to make sure to focus the damage on the target as soon as possible and not waste your AoE too early you see that here I use my Wrath in order to stun them when the gaps are still relatively big so we can apply some damage to them without them rolling around us and as soon as they're smaller we are going to drop our AoE ults so we can take them down ASAP and not run the risk of having too many small gaps at once that all damage us at the same time. The more often the gap is split, the more damage you will take, but the smallest ones don't knock you up anymore, it seems. The free hugs knocks round is not that complex, but it's important to coordinate CC. She will lock down a random target and that target will take damage until a Nox is CC'd or you have something like a hell or gap cleanse. That's why you should always time your CC 
and coordinated with the team so she can see be cc'd at all times especially with wrath and stuff it's relatively easy to do so so you do not get cc'd for too long and one of your players dies because you don't have interrupt to take down her ability which is more than a root is silent stun and everything in one just the two of us is pretty straightforward try to kill both targets at once drag the vamana to the ra and that way you will be assured that you can kill them around the same time and not face many problems Otherwise, try to kill the Vamana first, unless you have anti-heal, because if you don't have anti-heal, the Vamana is just gonna heal for an eternity and you're dead. As soon as Ra is enraged, he will have auto-aim on his ult and he can even re-aim his ult while charging it. Rip the Dream is basically just a standard teamfight round that has a shit ton of damage at higher stages. What is important here is that most of the characters on the enemy team will use their ultimates relatively early, and if you time it right, you can avoid most of them by just having your leap up. I misplayed that here, but if I waited a little longer, I could have avoided all of them. And that way, the round becomes much easier. Other than that, just focus down Artemis and Ra first, and you should not have too many problems. Colorful Triage will make you face the three buff camps from the Conquest map. What's important here is that the red buff can only be damaged by magical characters, whereas the blue buff can only be damaged by physical characters. The speed buff can be damaged by both, as far as I know. This round should rarely be problematic as long as everyone knows which target to focus. That way you don't waste any abilities on the wrong target. The next round is one that highly depends on luck. It's Arachnophobia. Arachne will pull a random target through the webs most of the time. So depending on who you pull, you might be in trouble or not. The most important thing is to use any hard crowd control you may have right away when you get pulled. Just to ensure that Arachne can't killed you before your team arrives. If you use your hard control call, then you will be able to kill her in a relatively short time. She will often get away once to the other side of the map if you can't burst her and lock her down fast enough, but that's usually not a problem as she should die on the second encounter. The last round here is probably the nastiest one in my opinion is Feel the Thunder. You have two targets on your team that basically get an Aegis around them, an electric Aegis that will deal damage to allies nearby, so stay away from those. But at the same time, you will also be hit by a Chain Lightning by the Big Zeus, and this Chain Lightning deals a ridiculous amount of damage. It can go up to 2000 depending on where you're standing. You might want to try and split up, but I've experienced that even when you're completely split up, it sometimes completely depends on luck, and you can just die immediately if you don't have any protections against magical damage. It's a bit of an awkward round in my opinion, but either way, it works best when you try and split up, and definitely stay away from the people in your team that have that circle around them. While I'm still talking here, we're already getting in the loop. As you can see, after round 15, all the rounds start again and you're stuck in a basically infinite loop. Well, I will make a more advanced pick strategy guide and item strategy guide once I've played around in this mode a little more than I was able so far on the PTS. Uh, there are some things that are worth pointing out. You typically want Wrath multiple times on your team, at least one, but often two. And you often want at least one or two frenzies. Shell is also great, so is meditation, anything that helps your team. And generally what I've experienced is, aside of wanting penetration for the pillars, you want uh, that maybe that Crusher and uh, Titan's Bane, it's often helpful to get some sort of a team-oriented item. Maybe Hardwood Amulet and Sovereignty just to get that extra protection against certain targets, then maybe Witchblade to slow down certain targets and stuff like that, and Seal it to silence certain targets, though I'm not quite sure how good it is in the end yet, as I'm not sure which targets are actually affected by the silence, but Overall, anything that somewhat helps your team can make a difference. Do not waste many on crit and consider if you need full boots. Some characters won't and mobility is not quite as important as it is in other game modes. With that, we're actually concluding the second video of the day. I hope this was interesting for you guys. I hope this was helpful for when Xingtian's Mountain actually is live. Thank you guys for watching and this time I actually see you tomorrow. Duke Sloth, out.